All right, so it looks like Dog Pack 404 has released a second part. Uh, so we're going to react to it today. And last time I did a reaction to part one, uh, I got a lot of criticism from people. They were saying, nah, you need to pause it or you need to slow it down or you can't just keep re-uploading stuff and do all these crybabies in the comment section. So this time around, we'll do it your way. But guess what? It's going to take five to ten times longer and will chew up majority of your day. Okay, so don't just drop him to 20 seconds and leave. You wanted the whole thing, you wanted the whole uploading of reactions. Now you're gonna get it. So here we go, let's dive right into it. <clears throat> so this is I Work for Mr. Beast, he's a psychopath. This is the part two to Dog Pack. This is the guy that has been exposing Mr. Beast for everything he's been doing that's corrupt. And this is crazy, it's already got uh, 4.2 million views in 12 hours. So obviously it's a massive video, it's got a massive impact. All the YouTubers are milking this up, just like myself. And we're just going ahead and uh, putting out what we think about it. Some people are doing short videos, some people are doing massive long encyclopedia long videos. I'm just going to do something that's hopefully moderate, something that's balanced, something that's in between. Alright, so here we go without further ado. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I was going to be somebody! I was going to be this! Kyle should lay down! Kyle should lay down! It's the worst protection that I've ever made me do! So Jake Weddle was an employee for Mr. Beast. He was in most of his videos. Uh, he was mainly on the back of the videos and he tried to get to the main cast. Uh, but because he wasn't kissing so much butt, he wasn't able to get there 100%. Uh, only the people that did was a yes man or yes girl to Mr. Beast got to be in the front of the videos and were the main show, the main star. Okay, content cop from Timu back at it again. So just before I get into my interrogation with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle, uh, a lot has happened since my last video. Uh, after posting, I got hundreds of messages from former Mr. Beast employees, um, and I had them all like send proof of former employment. You know, just people showing their support or telling their stories of, of you know fake videos or unsafe practices, uh, you know, toxic workplace stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really going to get into those claims because, for one, like. Most people want to stay anonymous, which I understand. And also, like, I think most of that stuff's just been covered with, with you know, the... No, don't stay anonymous. If you've, you've got something to say, say it and have a backbone and have your name behind it and your face because I'm sick and tired of listening to these cowards that say, oh, yeah, all these comments, what happened here, here, here. Yeah, but how do we know that's real? That could be a bunch of fake comments or bot comments, which is basically the same. So be real. Don't listen to this cop guy at the beginning that just said, don't it's okay to be anonymous no bullshit you fucking say say it with some with some some confidence and tell people what's up you know and be, be yourself for fuck's sake we got too many unconfident people out there in society that don't want to talk to people don't want to show their face don't want to have a video camera it's fucking weird and ridiculous you know this generation is so much weaker. Anyways, get back on the video. The news coming out about Beast Games and everything. Uh, and also I have like more serious allegations that I want to start covering. Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly respond with part two, you know, like a, like this is Kids Bop, Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What, what does he know? Yeah, so there's a guy above Mr. Beast that funds him all the money, and he's the one that's been uh, harassing these people who are in charge of this little uh, alliance that's trying to expose Mr. Beast, which has been working very well so far. But there's a lot more to learn from the Mr. Beast Corporation that's been going on behind the scenes that the majority of the public, myself included, don't know about. So let's learn some more today. Um... So I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three, so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. Uh, and I'll make sure to give you full credit and, and plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten dozens of messages from former Mr. Beast employees of, of uh, very serious allegations. So I just wanna put a call to action in this, at the start of this video that you know, if you have a story, you can DM me, just uh, make sure you send uh, proof of employment first because I get a lot of DMs. Uh, and like, as much as I meme and joke around, like, I take anonymity very seriously. So without explicit permission, I don't go public with anything. And obviously if it goes to court, I don't, I would hope they would censor your information from the court documents, I don't know. Uh, oh, and former contestants too. That's another thing I heard after posting my last video is uh, during the 100 boys versus girls video, uh, I have people corroborating the same story that 
the, the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. I'm sure the guy with the camera was looking at girls when he shouldn't have been. Like some weird sneaky dude. That's a low life. But, you know, it's kind of strange how there's so many accusations going on. We need to see hard facts. You know, so the, the, hearsay is anything. Anyone can just make up a bullshit story. But what's an actual factual event? What was a factual event is what I would like to hear. You, know, you, you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and, and then you try to f them. Okay. That okay, so that's a little bit crazy. Yeah, like that's, that's really like not okay. <laughs> <laughs> that seems really dark. No, no, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. I'm, okay. I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. <laughs> because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously. Mr. Beast right, production she... crew trapping 100 girls in a circle, depriving them of sleep, starving them, and then spying on them. Crazy. That's uh, disgusting. Three, so, you know, uh, Mr. Beast, do with that information what you will. I know uh, Chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations. So this is what Chucky said. This is a little weak sauce with long rag hair from um, the Mr. Beast crew. I'm receiving many DMs corroborating very serious accusations of S contact harassment, S assault, and S coercion occurring within the company. Hearing these stories from both former and contestants and employees alike, anything you would care to address? Or are you just interested in talking about raccoons and discrediting in my character? Yeah, so Chucky is he's just a coward. He just hides behind TikTok. He doesn't put his face on a camera. He doesn't upload a YouTube video. He's a coward. Anyone that runs Twitter, or t uh, Twitter basically, and doesn't do any uploading videos is a fucking bitch. Is they a coward? Okay, they need to address it on a camera. That's what real men do, and that's what real women do. There's no fucking messages like th that's embarrassing. That is seriously embarrassing. That's like in the real world, yeah. If you are have a f beef with somebody, and instead of just talking to them about something. You're writing it in the fucking dirt as a message, and then they're coming across it one day saying, oh, this guy or this girl, they're writing weird shit in the dirt instead of actually addressing it to my face. You know what I'm saying? Like, So bitches and cowards have always been around ever since the Stone Age, and we still have it. It's called fucking Twitter, you know, and, and I don't even have a Twitter account myself because it's just a bitch way to fucking get out of things or to talk to people. You know, it's just though that Twitter platform um, is for fucking idiots. It's for cowardice idiots. That's what it's for, you know, and I don't want to be part of it at all. But YouTube, you can put your face on there like you're supposed to do. It's called YouTube, yeah? And you can address everything, the accusations, what's going on, and be a real person. So anyway, my interview with Jake Weddle, um, I chose to interview him because I thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 and 2020. And also, what people don't know is that he came back in 2021 to be the sole contestant of a Mr. Beast video, which never got uploaded because it went very badly. Uh, he also knows about another um, portable document format who, who was working at Mr. Beast while, while actually on the registry. Uh, and, and I'll get more into that story at the end of the video. Uh, so I got his DM, drove straight to New York overnight, did not sleep, just drank a bunch of caffeine. And, and I also only had one uh, microphone in the interview, which he's wearing. So it's mostly just him talking. Also, like, final thing, people said my last video started slow. This video also starts slow. It, it, it you know, builds up over time. But I'll do the retention thing and say, uh, the ending will blow your mind. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jake Weddle, everybody. I'm Jake Weddle. Uh, most people who, uh, if, if you know me from Mr. Beast. I yeah, people need to understand this video that he's making, this isn't for clicks, this isn't for views, this isn't for retention, this isn't for entertainment. This is real shit that fucking happened and is happening right now as we speak at the moment at the Mr. Beast Corporation. So you, you don't need to be patient. I know you're not all about, I need to get the clicks, I need to get the, you know, the dopamine hits from, from the, the video. That's not what this is video is about. This is more like a documentary for older, mature adults where they want to learn exactly what the heck's going on. You know, and kids need to understand and be patient and realize that. I'm, I'm a deep cut. I'm in a few of the videos, uh, uh, sometimes maybe purposefully kept in the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor a lot of the time. Uh, but I've, I've been in some videos. I've worked on a lot of them. Uh, was there... So you can see him a couple of Mr. Beast videos. You can see him making it, you know, just 
the little small clips, the little small little video, not the big ones, but he's still making it, you know? So he's still doing all right, I guess. So he has seen a lot of what's been going on and what shouldn't be going on. From 2019 to 2020, 2021-ish, when I came back and did some more. I, I was there when they were authentic, and then I saw the transition to what I feel like is a company. He's like a TV show now. It went from- it, That's exactly what I'm saying. He went from YouTuber guy with a camera to, uh, Amazon. The yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, he was a YouTuber, and then he was kind of like, um, you know, a generous YouTuber. And then we saw him as a great person there. And then he started making these videos where it's just overdone, over the top, in terms of, like, and there's... It's just too much. And then you know that stuff that was going on was, was probably iffy behind the scenes. And, you know, you could kind of tell. So he just got corrupted by very rich and powerful people. And that's what usually happens. You know, when rich and powerful people try and influence you and say, we'll give you money, 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 like crazy, but you got to do this, this, this for us. I don't like people like that. Quid, quid pro quo, quo people that try and corrupt you with money to make you do things you don't really want to do or that's not right or it's not good. Yeah, I don't like people like that. I like to do, yeah, I like money, don't get me wrong, but then I like to do what I like to do or what's kind of right or what is right because, you know what I mean? Like, it does make... It just makes life a little bit like nicer and easier and less stressful, isn't it? So culture around there was very unspoken, but there was a vibe. There was half the people who, if you made Jimmy happy, you were on the good half. And these people got random bonuses and uh, were usually moved up, had more screen time. Uh, and then there was people who, if you had a disagreement or butt heads with Jimmy or just you didn't like it, you know, you were the other half. And uh, so that would probably be me if I worked with Mr. Beast. I'd probably butt heads with Mr. Beast and the crew over disagreements or, or things that I don't think could go the best, you know? Or right. So, and then he's got people that are yes man, yes girls. Oh, no. I consistently was in the half that Jimmy did. Jimmy doesn't like me. That's fine. I don't like him either. It's okay. Uh, oh, that's just so good to say. I don't like Jimmy. I, I hate you so much. Uh, he didn't want anyone to get more popular or have more of a a way out necessarily like oh i'm doing my twitch thing on the side don't do that because you could get famous and leave and talk about me negatively uh and i could tell that the yes men were you know well carl does twitch on the side so does that, and um chandler does um tiktok on the side so i mean that's a bunch of bs all of the mr beast crew does something on the side you know they're all doing their little side hustle videos and live streams and crap like that Probably because you don't pay them enough to be in just the Mr. Beast, you know, which is unfortunate. Or they're really greedy people. I don't know 100% what the story is. I'm just putting out some information out there so people can kind of go off something better than nothing. Doing well. And uh, I was, you know, disgruntled uh, for quite some time. So I've talked to reporters, right? Like publicly. And I've always had to choose my words very, very carefully because I don't want to say anything I don't stand behind, obviously. So I used to talk to people. I used to glaze Jimmy publicly for things I do genuinely think are true. Uh, but then it's like, well, how come you didn't talk about the working conditions? Well, I wanted a career. I didn't want to, you know, speak ill of YouTube's golden boy and then I'm blacklisted forever. I, I, I tell people I was talking to you, they go, don't, what are you doing? You're going to kill your career. It's like, I have to or I'll be sad. Uh, if this is the moment, we're going to talk about it. So uh, as far as that, uh, that's my covering. I don't know if I 100% trust this guy because he's not looking at the camera enough and he's just kind of acting strange at times. So I don't know if he's telling the truth or he's just putting on a show. I can't really tell at this point. So hopefully he is a real person in this. I do trust the dog pack guy a lot more than this guy. So hopefully he does come around and start spitting out what actually happened behind the scenes and starts looking at the camera and being more, you know, respectable, I guess, because he's just looking at the, the ground like a weirdo and muttering and i don't know it's strange up to why we didn't talk about xyz sooner but now this is probably why he didn't make the mr beast videos as much as he should have i mean i'm not defending mr beast here i'm just saying that he's just not as good a, of a uh, youtuber uh person as that he could be you know what i'm saying I know. What, what would you say is the fakest video that you worked on while you were there fakest video that i worked on while i was there this is the extent of the the fakeness that i was involved to this is like <laughs> admitting to my complicity i was a writer there and we were working so he was a writer. So this does make sense. Yeah, he's definitely not a, you know, an actor or a, a member or a, a, a character in, in, in it. He's just a writer. Okay, okay. This this makes sense. Kind of video. Uh, 
crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or uh, something. It was, it was a rock or a meteor in the title of it, I can't remember, but he wanted to do a prank where, unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddell's car. We're gonna take another meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have no idea that we're doing this. Weddell and Marcus are probably shocked. They had no idea. And so that was the one and only time I had to, huh, my car? They freaking knew, Mr. Beast a liar. They knew that their car was gonna get destroyed. And it probably wasn't even their cars. It was probably some random car, cheap car with no engine and no transmission in it. And they just got it and put it in a parking lot. They're gonna blow it up. You know, just for views, just for clicks. What? And on the fly, I saw him, uh, cause Mark was in that video. It's all staged, just like Hollywood. They take a car with nothing inside of it. It's just a bare, bare shell vehicle. And then they'll blow it up and you think, oh wow, what an expensive car. But really it's a salvaged piece of shit car. It's all rusted through. And you know, they just made it look nice with filters or whatever, or you know, magic. And there you go, you know, it's all about illusions. That's what all the videos are with YouTube and Mr. Beast and, and Hollywood and movies. It's all illusionist kind of stuff, you know, it's trickery just to get you entertained. So Marcus is calling his mom. Marcus genuinely had no idea. He was just... You're going to assume it's a real car. That's what, everyone's going to assume it other than the people that really know what's going on or, you know, people that are a little bit smarter. You genuinely had no idea. But, uh, so Marcus is calling his mom and his mom's freaking out. And I'm like, oh no, they're gonna call my mom next. So I had to text my mom, who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, I'm texting my mom, I go, I go, mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. And then I hit send, and then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> and I call my mom and I tell her, and oh, she should have got the Oscar. Oh my god, on the fly, she goes, what? I'm on vacation! Mom, my car has been, um, destroyed. Wait, what? <laughs> a meteor hit it. Jacob, <laughs> I'm on vacation! Do you understand that? See how fake it is? Like, he's telling her to be surprised, this and this and this. When she should naturally be surprised. It's normal, genuine surprised. That's the thing, how fake it is, man. A video, and they're supposed to give me 10k to put a down payment on a uh, new car and they wanted me to get like a big flashy new car. 10K was supposed to be a down payment. And uh, I can't afford a big flashy new car because I work at Mr. Beast. <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't get anything I couldn't afford the tax. He, says, he said he can't afford a flashy car because he works, works at Mr. Beast. I thought Mr. Beast paid his employees like a lot of money, like a decent wage. This is crazy. I couldn't get anything I couldn't afford the insurance on. Um, so I, I do my part of the video and I get a mom van that I could afford. And uh, Jimmy was like, why didn't you get a cooler car? I was like, I, what do you, I can't afford that, bro. Come on, what are you talking about? You know, if I was working. Mr. B says, why don't you get a cooler car? I would have said, Mr. B, if you paid me more, I can buy a cooler car, but you don't. So hence the minivan. On a TV show in the nineties, on a show that was. To be honest, I don't like to toot my own horn, but again, beep. I would be a lot better on Mr. B than this guy, I think. As an actor, he's definitely a writer. He belongs in a fucking film room with a bunch of like film nerds that break down every millisecond of the film and they're checking audio, video, they're writing, they're all collaborating. He belongs in the, in the, the recording slash editing film studio place, you know? And I would be one of the main actors in front of the camera with other actors, with side actors and, and, and uh, assistant actors and, and brought in actors, you know? Because I know how to speak and say things that will f throw people off and go, like, oh, whoa, <laughs> you know, like, but him, he, he's, he's just not material for it. I don't know. That's probably why Jimmy didn't want him in the videos. I can understand that. But then he knows a lot of things have been going on. So let's listen to some more. A quarter is successful. I could retire today. But now I make dog shit pay, uh, making gajillionaires more money. Yeah, so when he talks about kajillionaires more money, he's talking about a future Mr. Beast, but he's also talking about the person that's above Mr. Beast that's funding him all the money. The CEO of Mr. Beast. There is someone above him, and it's not his dad. It is some, like, super rich person that's attached to, like, the main corporations in the world. You know, the stock market, um, you know, some of these uh, wealthy investment places it, that it's kind of connected and uh i just walked into the writer's room uh, and that's one of the reasons why i left was because i just walked in there uh, and asked for not necessarily 
a gajillion dollars, but maybe a salary that was more proportional to the work I was doing given how much revenue that work was doing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I talked about that and I talked about the Writers Guild and how this is what Writers Guild Industry Standard is for the streaming internet content with ads. I thought that was the closest thing to YouTube and I didn't even bring up residuals because, oh my God, if I got residuals for every video I worked on, boy, howdy, I could retire. But uh, uh, yeah, I, the, la the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there, uh, older comic, uh, black guy, he had a kid. And just because you have a lot of money and you think you can retire, Sometimes it doesn't mean that you can retire because people actually like to work. But then also, some people are piss poor at managing their money, their finances, their um, things that they buy, and then they have to work or they have to make income to pay for that stuff or to keep paying payments on that stuff, you know? So even, <laughs> yeah, that's just my take. And uh, I got paid more than him, and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job. And uh, well, I'm some 20-year-old fucking white guy. Why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. And uh, one of the things I, I didn't like about the way some of the B stuff shook out was... Some, someone just said, like, right now, or, or something like, God, I, like a cue for him to cry. I think this part is fake. Yeah, this part's fake. This, this part is put on. To build sympathy with the with the member of this video. I feel, I feel really guilty about the way this like shook out. Um, no, I heard something. You lot, you idiots, gave it away. You didn't edit it out. Something like "Go now" or "Q now" or da, da, da. I heard something like that, and then you started crying. Like, some, this is staged. This is bullshit. This part right here. Yeah, I was talking to other writer. Awful it's fucking like performance. It's fucked up, you know that. Awful. That's how the pay is. And I want of course it's fucked up. We know this. You yeah. paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I don't have a kid. Um, mm. And he didn't want to rock the boat. He, did, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He was just, I, I like my job. I like, you know, because when you, when, you, when you grow up with, you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So he didn't want to rock the boat. You do realize you don't actually really lose money because money has a funny way of coming back to you. It's called karma. So just because you lose one thing here, or one thing there, doesn't mean it's hundred percent gone. It comes back in through life somehow. It might not be through that same person. It might be through a different company or a different person, but it's still going to come back eventually. So you've never actually really lost anything in life. But as long as you have a losing mentality, you're never going to be fucking happy. You're always going to be depressed because you're always looking at everything like a loss, 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 instead of like you take a loss here but you win here. And the loss will come back around and be a win. You know, you, you got to see things in balance. But he said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like, if that's, like, I, you know, I trust you. And he, he stood with me. He went to that writer's, he went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. Yeah, so, I mean, you can only, you can ask for a little bit extra money. But if you're asking for a lot, yeah, they're, you're probably going to get kicked out and they'll hire someone else who's the same price or cheaper. So, I mean, he kind of did it to himself. And if I knew... And there's no good crying about it. That's not going to give him any more extra cash or any extra respect. If I knew he was going to lose his job too, I wouldn't have done it. No, cry me a river, dude. This is just this, this is very put on. I don't think this is genuine, this part. Me, I was over the moon. I was like, you're going to give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> you know, I don't get to deal with the, with the you know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day? You know, and I get to go, go home and you get, you're going to pay me to leave. I was over the moon. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he, was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? And I really regret, I really regret that. But, you know, me and him are really still tight. We're still good friends. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Yeah. This is fuck. This is probably strange. Uh, yeah. So maybe you'll feel better? Honestly, best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> now that he's uh, very, very far removed from all this crazy shit, I guess. Do you think Jimmy really enjoys doing good and helping people? I think Jimmy wants to be the best YouTuber. I think he is late. 
He wants to be the biggest and best YouTuber, yeah. We know what Jimmy wants. He's are focused on one goal. Um, and I think whatever he has to do to achieve that goal, he'll do. And I think it was the smartest decision for him that he calculated, because he's very good with numbers. If I donate to charity, people can't say I'm shitty. If I donate to, if I give this homeless guy 10K, what do you mean I'm a bad guy? But I've always thought, if you're gonna do something nice for somebody and you stick a camera in their face while you do it, it you didn't do a nice thing for somebody. You, you gained something. You, there was a homeless guy on the street and you saw an opportunity for yourself and your image and you gave one yeah, so guy- I 100% what he's saying, yeah. So you come across a homeless person, you give them money, you get it to go. But if you're throwing a camera in their face and say, look at me, look what I'm doing for this person, it kind of look, makes you look like a weirdo. It makes you look like you're just about yourself, like selfish. So, And you don't give a shit about the homeless person. You're exploiting the homeless person to get fucking money out of it. You know, in terms of on YouTube or other social media platforms. I think that's fucking wrong completely, yeah. So I agree with what he has to say. I had $10,000 who needed it to eat, and now the revenue you ge generated from that video is way more than what you gave. I think when he's generating... Yeah, he probably made like $100,000 and only gave away ten grand. so... He made $90,000, which means that... Is he really generous? Probably not. He's a fucking businessman at that point. There's on camera, it's the least authentic thing in the world. There, there, there's an element of, you know, oh, hey, you're crying, that's so good for camera. You know, I'm so glad he's... If you're crying because you're so thankful that you got XYZ, and then you go, oh, that's so, I'm so glad he needed it that bad so I could come in and, oh, can you, can you cry more? Oh, it's so good for the camera if you could, oh, I just did. Yeah, so he's been trained to cry on camera like phony film people, movie people, um, TV show people do, like drama shows. No, that's not right. You, if you're going to cry, you better damn well cry for a reason, not because you're fucking being trained to or... You know, because it's part of the fucking scene. That's bullshit. Genuine crying. You know, your, your family member died or something. Or, you know, you see a, a country get blown up into pieces. And you're like, wow, that's really sad for these people. I, I feel like a tear for them. But, you know, you don't, don't fucking cry on camera just because you're told to. Or it's part of the act. Fuck that. It made me uncomfortable that I was working there. And I didn't like it. And I vocalized it sometimes. And I think that's why I wasn't on camera as much as they said I was going to be. Just be your fucking self, dude. If they don't like you, they'll kick you out. It's no big deal, you know? They'll, fire, they'll hire some other fucking phony person. Uh, I was told... Or someone who can be phony. Well, at one point, that I was going to be like fourth banana, you know? It was going to be Jimmy, Chris, Chandler, me, you know? And then that never happened. I remember talking about that. Like, well, now it's Jimmy, Chandler, Carl, Nolan... Chris isn't even in the picture, he's taken out. Hey, I thought my contract said XYZ. Uh, and then I got the severance checks. So, you know, whatever, all that regard. So after your I wonder how much, uh, my question would have been to him, how much were the severance checks? How much did they pay you off to get you out of Mr. Beast? Severance checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? Right, so so in videos where I was uh, appearing in later, that, that's why you keep nice publicly. If, you, if you're nice in public, hey, Jake was nice in public. Let's have him back for something. You know, yeah, sure. So I was, I was hoping they call back. You know, and uh, I, I appeared in some videos after I left. I think one of them was a, a, a three days in a maximum security prison. Uh, if I did do many challenges in that, I got paid. I was, you know, clocked in with a with a rate, and I would get paid and compensated for those. Uh, but there was one video I, I was in. I got, I got so he was getting paid. Okay, I paid a lot for it, but it didn't, uh, it, it didn't come out. Uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't come out because it didn't go well. There, there was a video um, that came out probably like a year ago, something like that. It was, it was the, uh, it got a lot of hot water. YouTube star Mr. Beast paid a man $340,000 to spend 21 days in a windless room. Sorry, a windowless room. I'll do that, it's easy. When it came out, it was the, uh, the like, surviving like uh, $10,000 every day you survive in solitary or surviving solitary for whatever. It was, just, it was one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, what? You shouldn't do that. And people don't know that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me. Hi, we're visible. Ah, so he was the original character to do that, but he probably couldn't hack it or something. 
Why, what's the reason that he couldn't do it? I was already, I was already planning on uh, moving to New York, and I had worked at a couple of YouTube companies after Beast, and I had a little bit of change in my pocket. You know, the most change I had in my pocket ever. You know, small potatoes, you know, compared to Beast bullshit. But you know, I thought I had enough to to move to New York or whatever. And uh, I, I get a call uh, from somebody over there, and they go, "Hey, they want you for a video." I was like, "Oh, amazing, great, cool, thank God." Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, they, well, what do you mean they want you for a video? You just told us earlier you're a writer. Why the fuck would you be in a video? Your acting is not too good and you don't have much experience. You know, because you've been like um, an extra in the videos. Like you haven't been a main person, a main star. So I don't understand why people would want a writer background in their videos. It doesn't make much sense. Well, it was the video and they tell me the print. Remember I said on the last video, piss poor management equals piss poor results. That's exactly what it is. The pitch. They, 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 they try to make the pitch sound like it's going to be like a walk in the park. Uh, the pitch is a uh, hundred days in solitary confinement, uh, but don't worry. Like you only have to last like thirty. We have like a video. They're pitching it like a. No, so they're lying. They're saying it was a hundred days and it was really thirty days. Just like those people say twenty four hours and it's really fucking like an hour. Like it's it's all bullshit. It's all lies, man. Social media fucking is. There's so much corruption. It's nuts. Oh, it's, at first it's gonna be like a luxury. You're gonna spend 24 fucking hours. You better be there for damn well 24 hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, pull the timer out, time it, show the fucking audience, show the proof. Every vacation, you're gonna have like a hot tub and an ice cream machine, and like part of the video is gonna be you decide. I think the biggest YouTuber in the future is gonna be the one, one that actually sticks to what the heck they say. It's gonna be a true YouTuber, not a fucking fake phony. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be the true YouTuber that's going to make the billions and have the fucking everyone praising that person. Guy or girl doesn't fucking matter. It's just someone that has a backbone and someone that tells the truth and is honest. And says when they say it's going to be two years in a fucking room, guess what? It's two years in a room. There's no shortcutting it. There's no, like, manipulating it. There's no BS. It is what it is. That's the person that's going to be very, 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 very successful. But there's not a lot of people out there with that mentality. They can't even last 24 freaking seconds, let alone 24 years, or 24 hours, or 24 days, or 24 minutes, or whatever it's going to be. I think, like, what, what, what items am I going to get rid of, you know, today? And they like, the choice. They were like, uh, it's only going to be bad for the last, like, five days tops, when you have, like, nothing left. You're the first, it's going to be, like, a breeze for most of it. And uh, by the end of it, after 30 days, you're going to get... $300,000, because it's $10,000. So he's going to last 30 days, if it really truly is 30 days, yeah? And they're going to pay him $300,000. That's like $10,000 a day or something like that. That's crazy amount of money. I was dead. And I don't know, man. I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, burr, 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 excuse me? You, I'll yell dance for you if you put that kind of money in my face, sure. They were like... You're now don't forget, you've got if you do gain three hundred thousand dollars, yeah, you're going to have to pay about half of that in taxes. So you probably make about one hundred and fifty, maybe one hundred and seventy if you're lucky in tax, you know, after tax. So it's still decent money though, but just you got to keep that in 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 retrospect. You're going to be locked in this room, and we got to make sure you're on all the time. We're going to have cameras on you all the time, and you're perfect for this because you never shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, on, on paper, I was like, okay, I can do this, and, and I was, they always, they always cut me out of the videos. They always, and I was, you know, editors have told me that, uh, it's because you have too much of a personality, and so... They cut you out of the videos probably because you kind of ramble, and you don't make sense some of the times, and they want someone that talks a lot, but they talk a lot of, like, interesting topics. They talk a lot about some facts, they talk a lot about... Some entertaining stuff, some funny stuff. They, they they want a decent personality. And it's very hard for someone to be all of the time a personality that's constantly spitting out creative stuff or interesting things or funny things. It's very hard to find someone like that. So it's not his fault, really. They're asking for the impossible. With this video, I thought, this is perfect. It's a video they can't cut me out of. I'm the guy. And so I thought, well, if I have to do this if I have to do solitary confinement in order to do the things I want to do, then I will do that. 
that I held my tongue and I swallowed my pride and I tried to do one, one, one last ride. So these contestants, they cr they try and act like this is like you're actually a prisoner, you know, and you're you're locked up and you know they pay you if you're locked up and you, there has to be like 500 cameras on you, you know. It's I I, I don't know if it's that bad because I've never gone for a Mr. Beast video. I haven't even been invited to a Mr. Beast video. You know, I've known about them going on the auditions and all this or asking for extra people, but I've never had the access to be able to talk to the people to be able to get the access or be on the videos. You know what I'm saying? So, but I do know like what he's trying to say. He's trying to act like he's a prisoner, but I don't think the Mr. Beast crew would, would treat you like, you know, would completely like treat you like a prisoner. Like, I think it'd be somewhat like a prisoner. Uh, and, uh, I get there, and at first it's fine. And uh, I mean, they, they had just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know? Which that's probably not good, you know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. Uh, it looked good on the visual. Like the key looks good on camera. You know, it's movie magic bullshit. It was a terrible facility. I mean, he was in one of the studios. I tried to tell you guys this earlier that Mr. Beast does replicate Hollywood in terms of movies. He's got this massive studio, looks like Paramount Pictures or, or Hollywood itself. And. It's a bunch of like props in this huge, massive warehouse of a building he has, and everything is staged in that building with lighting and sound and you name it, just like Hollywood do. You know, a bunch of fake crap, but you think it's real because of the CGI and you know, wow, it's got to be all of it's got to be real and amazing, and you know, it's just it's all put on. But you know, little did the audience know. The, they had to like get like a separate like tank for you know septic stuff. Uh, yeah, there was a hot tub in it. Yeah, there was an ice cream machine. Like, things look, were cool and funny on paper. But when you think about stuff, a hot tub if not connected to a filtration system. Give it three days, it's gonna stink. You know, if there's not a, like a hot water mechanism, so the, the hot tub was a lukewarm tub at best, which I was a silly complaint, but the shower was always cold, and you would taken like a quick shower, and, and I had cameras 24 7 on me and the ice cream machine let's talk about that for a second the ice cream machine has two modes i wouldn't even take a shower then if i knew that the, there was no filtration system i wouldn't even take a shower i'll just have like baby wipes and say you need to give me baby wipes so i can wipe my sweat off me because i'm not taking a shower with no filtration that's disgusting on and off reeking of smelly dairy mildew like so yeah like moldy dairy like cheese is disgusting i would never want to smell that crap and mildew at the same time both combined together uh that's just a recipe for me wanting to yak i got to choose which sense was assaulted at a time i, I couldn't have all of them good uh, uh so the, the little things started to build up you know there was like a, a the bug thing wasn't like terrible but it was a factor and like at first it was fine you know and you're you're, you're playing it up like because you know it's a video and it got to a point where, like, they weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we, like, have, like, nighttime hours? You know? And they said no, because it would fuck up the time-lapse shots. That's no, no, that's not true. So, if they had time... Oh, time-lapse. If they had um, scenes where there was nighttime, all they would have to do is put night vision cameras on, and then they would just add in the time-lapse later on through the editing room it can easily be done and it will still be the right time so that they're not screwing around you know with the audience's trust it would still be legit so mr beast and his crew they either got it wrong or they just didn't know what the fuck they're doing or they they majorly manipulated it because they didn't want to do the extra work there's something was going on there but they could have easily turned the lights off for the contestant which would have made it easier and then they could have had the night vision cameras go on that's not hard to do you know, you just need to have the technology. Time lapse of what? Me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a, a like, oh, you're going to get XYZ hours of sunlight. Oh, great. Why well, don't know how they figured that one out? I didn't have it. <laughs> you know, I did, one of the things was you got to take away your clock so you didn't know what time it was. Okay, I got no access to the sun. I got no access. I haven't used a clock in a long time. I even asked Michelle sometimes. I say, what's the time? Because And what day is it? Because I don't even know sometimes what day and time it is. Sometimes I spend so long in my room with my YouTube channel, I don't even know what day and time it is. You know, I only, sometimes, I only know it because of the sun outside or no sun outside. Or if it's a trash, garbage 
truck comes by my house, I think, okay, yeah, we're going to have trash day coming up. You know, I don't really, that's anything, I don't really go off time as much as I used to. So that's not really a big deal, I don't think. Access the clock. I don't know, like, the, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep. And I, I have insomnia problems now, um, it, but I, I, they might have started there. I had good people. Now, what to make a really good video is I spent 30 days without sleep. That would be really interesting to watch. I, and I would, I, I would be extremely skeptical to the contestant that can do this. Because I, I would actually have to be there to believe it. There's no way someone could last 30 days with no sleep. Yeah, maybe a week. Maybe two weeks. But not 30 consistent days. Zero sleep. I just, someone's going to nod off. Someone will fail the challenge and lose a million dollars. Or lose five million dollars. However big the prize money is. I don't think anyone can ever do that. But I would love to see it. But I'd have to be there. Because like I said, the whole crew that's filming that, I wouldn't even trust them. Especially Mr. Beast these days. Fuck his shit. I don't trust anything he puts out now. But I'm talking about other channels that want to do like a massive challenge like that. I'd have to be there. Because to be able to see that and believe that, that's going to be really hard. Like that can easily be edited. You know, or spud up with time. And that time can be manipulated to think it's 24 hours. And really it's only been an hour that's gone by. Because they sped up the time so quickly. You would actually have to do a real 30 days. Which is about 360. No, how many hours is 30 days? There's 24 hours. Of, where's the calculator? Let me pull my calculator out. You lot wanted me to do the reaction slower. You get what you get. 30. You can't complain in the comment section after this. So we've got 30 days times... What was I trying to figure out again? 24 hours, yeah? So for, so that's 720 hours. You would have to have the cameras filming non-stop live. Well, it doesn't have to be live. It could be edited too, but live would be more trust. You could have, you'd have to do 70, 720 hours of film footage. You do realise you're going to have to need about 20 gigabytes of memory to be able to hold um, that amount of film information. You know what I mean? Your little 2 or 1 gigabyte SD card is going to run out of memory really freaking quick in about a couple of days. If you're lucky. You need 30 days of footage. So you're going to have to have massive SD cards, which is a, a storage device, a little card, yeah? That you transfer the information from the cameras to your uh, computers so you can edit the videos. You'd have to have a massive amount of that for that to be successful. People looking out for me. I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we gotta stop. So I, I, um, I just wanted to turn the lights off. And I'm, I'm vocalizing to people, I wish the lights would turn off. Okay, look here, my dude. If they're not going to turn the lights off, or they didn't turn the lights off, then guess what? You get something in the room you can cover your face with. That's the best thing you can do. You, obviously, I can understand why Mr. Beast and his team and his crew did not pick you for some of the videos. You are a little whiny complainer. Okay? They would call that a brat if you were a kid. It's unbelievable. Just cover your fucking face. In the military, there were so many times that we had light shining in our eyes and we had to put our uniforms or like a sleeping bag or a sleeping system or something we could find, you know, a piece of burlap over our eyes to stop the, the, the light from blinding our eyes. So we could get a couple of hours of sleep and then go back on mission. So I don't feel sorry for this guy at all in this part. And I go up to my friend, my, 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 my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. It's not a war crime. Are you kidding me? That is, that's not a war crime. It's not a torture, my friend. Not turning the lights off. Okay. I mean, it's nice to have the lights off. It's a comfort thing, yeah? But you can cover your eyes or you can look down and sleep on your front. So you're away from the light. So it makes it a lot, lot easier, you know, and cover up your peripheral vision so the, the light doesn't leak into your eyes. You can figure out a way to sleep if you're truly tired enough, which I doubt you were because you don't look like you work out. You don't look like you do things to drain your energy down, you know? So... If you are that tired, you would find a way to sleep. You know, with the light on or off, doesn't matter. Oh! Oh, good! <laughs> 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. 
this guy's talking about military rules, Geneva Convention. There's no such thing as light deprivation. It says there's sleep deprivation. It doesn't say light deprivation. This is moronic. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're giving me, you know, melatonin. You know, it's not helping. You know, and then, and then Jimmy would come in like every other day for like an hour, you know, to check in on me because he's doing other stuff. You know, I'm just the, the guy in the cage over here. He'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, and so he'd come by, he'd get the shots, he'd leave. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note for the director over the phone that would really piss me off. This is the note I got from the director, from Jimmy, uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? Okay, so that is obviously scripted, and Mr. B said he never scripts. That's a bunch of BS. If you're if you're telling your contestant, this guy in front of us, so we can see that he needs to t look at the camera and say, "You need to be thank. I am so thankful that I paid off all my student loans." That is completely rigged and staged. That's ridiculous. They pretend to make it genuine. I would just say I'm very thankful for this money I'm going to receive after this crazy challenge, and that is the truth. I'm not saying any bullshit scripted line. I'll tell the truth. That's what's going through my head. You know? And that's how the Mr. Beast videos, we thought they were legit. And they haven't been the whole time. So no wonder there's like millions and millions upon millions of audience members who are pissed off of Mr. Beast. This is 100% understandable. I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll, oh, you want your student loans paid off? You'll be in this cage. And you have, you have power over people, and one person doesn't have... I mean, what's, I don't see there's anything wrong with that. If someone says, hey, do you want to make half a million dollars? What you've got to do is jump in the cage for you know, a long amount of time and see if you survive. I mean, okay, so be it. You know, There's some people out there that, that will die for money, literally. They'll take a left lung shot. Or they'll, they, they, they'll sell their left kidney to make some money. So li surviving in a cage with a film crew is actually watching you. So you've got people watching, spectating, make sure you're okay. I don't see that this is that bad. I just get pissed off that Mr. Beast isn't real. I want him to be real as hell. The realest realist that you've ever seen on YouTube, you know? No scripts. Unscripted. I want the money to be real money. A million dollars stacked up to the ceiling, not fucking prop money. I'm talking real money, yeah? Minty green, real money to the ceiling. Where you can touch it, taste it. That is real money. I want everything to be real. You know? I want someone to replace Mr. Beast with realness. Because I'm sick and tired of all the fake phony crap I'm seeing on YouTube. There's a lot of it. I'm tired of it. It's boring. It's everywhere now. Everyone's fucking doing it. There's no, there's nothing interesting about that. There's nothing exciting. There's nothing like, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm looking forward to seeing realness on YouTube. With big, big, massive prizes. That people have to grind for and compete for. Heck yes. I want to see real, man. Resources and the other one does. And they, they all go over your head. And you go, of course, of course. Yeah, I agreed to it. I needed it, of course. There's something about, like, having the cameras on me all the time. Like, I was, I, was, I was not having a good time, but we were filming a video, so I was trying my best to be funny, you know? I'm, I, got, I, got I don't think you're there to be funny. I think you're there to compete for a lot of money. You're obviously going to the wrong game show, my friend. I'm a dark comic, you know? I, I, I don't feel sorry for him in this situation. The contestant here. I don't. I got bits about, I had a very traumatic life. Uh, I have, my, 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 my dad is in jail for sexual assault of a minor, you know, so this kind of stuff is very near and dear to my heart. You know, I don't fuck around with this shit. Yeah, I, I have jokes about that in my act. You don't have to have a family member go to jail for the sexual assault stuff to care enough. Everyone should be caring regardless if their family members have gone to jail or not. It should, should never be tolerated in society. It should never be enabled. It should always, always be looked down upon. It's fucking awful. You know someone's doing sexual stuff to kids, to minors. 
you should be disciplining them or you should be telling the authorities to do the job for you. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just messed up. That's completely wrong. It's diabolical. It's a sin. It's just... It's bad mojo, man. Bad karma. You know what I'm saying? It's really bad. You know, I, I joke about it because you know, that's what you do in a traumatic experience. You know, I, I re abusive relationships. I get out of it. The first thing I do is I, I do a type line about it. You know, so I'm in this situation where I, my, my mental health is not good. My physical health is getting worse. But we're filming. So I'm doing bits. This guy needs to understand there's a lot of people with mental health issues. There's a lot of people with physical issues. You know, he's not the only one. There's quadrillions of people across the world that have these issues, by the way. So he just feels like he, he, you know, I'm sure he can relate to more people than he realizes. He thinks he's just by himself. He's, this isn't true. A lot of people are going through this all the time. <laughs> but they have no prize money to get. Nothing to gain. They're broke as hell and they still have the same issues as this guy. So he needs to quit complaining so much. I'm talking to the If I was dog pack, I would be like, look, man, you need to appreciate kind of what you got. I understand you are making a negative video towards Mr. Beast and we get it. Let's look at the bad things he's done. But also, you are a little, you know, weak minded and you don't feel like you, you don't see you're a writer. You're not a contestant, really. You're trying to be one, but you're really not one. OK, you don't have the materials in you. That's just how it is. Some people do, some people don't. Some people are great at writing. Some people suck at writing. Some people are great at being a contestant. Some people suck at being a contestant. Some people are hilarious. Some people are fucking boring. You know, there's all these different transitions in life, all these different types of people. The camera! <laughs> and I'm being, you know, like, hey, it's been a couple days, I'm not doing so hot, you know? Which, if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera, but it, it, was, it was too real. <laughs> If they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? Wait a second. So there, so there are times he just admitted that Mr. Beast was being real, which is good. That's what you want. I think he was part of the problem as well. He was trying to make things a little fake. I don't want fake. You know, maybe he was kicking you out because you were being fake, man. You just admitted that you were trying to make a situation that is real into a fake, phony scene. Shame on you, man, for what you just said. Shame on this guy right now. This is dumb evidence right here. You know, if, if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? Because it's supposed to be a difficult challenge for a lot of money. If the lights are off, anybody could do it. And no one's going to want to watch something that everybody could do. Because they're already doing it. How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse footage for 10 seconds? I'm, I'm get, part of this is pissing me off. Part of this is really annoying me. And some of it, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, thankful they're saying this. You uh, try to get out? Yes! Hold on, what do you say? This difficult challenge. Couldn't turn the lights off. How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse footage for 10 seconds? Did you uh, try to get out? Yes! I was starting to calculate, uh, oh, I don't know if I could do 30. Uh, uh, how much uh, can I, well, how, how can I manage to get out of here sooner uh, and still have a video and still uh, have some cash and um, get the plug, man. I, I just, I just, I did. Since we're doing time-lapse shots and since they insisted on time-lapse shots, I said, all right, we'll get the time-lapse shots back. Yeah, but the problem with time-lapse so shots is they're not realistic. They're not real. Okay, they've been sped up. That means that the time isn't real. Which means that you haven't really gone through what you said you're fucking going through. It's a bunch of bullshit. That's why I don't like time-lapse videos. I think they're horse shit. And a lot of people are doing them. I'm sick and tired of watching them. I don't watch them. I just skip them and say, next. Let's see someone that actually does 24 hours. Not just fucking two hours and they're pretending like they've done 24 hours. I put my... I put my YouTube on, on with the whiteboard they gave me. And I was like, all right, yeah, scrub, go ahead and scrub that footage. You know, you got that whiteboard. Oh, oh, no, either that goes in or this footage is unusable. And then, you know, James... No, screw that. It's either real or no deal. That's how I am, man. That's what I like to see. That's why I like to be. And if I had a game show, that's exactly what I would do. It would be very real. It would be too real that people would say, wow, I've never seen a show like this before. Other than maybe Survivor. That is 90% real.
These weren't came in and erased it, you know, fucking, you know, don't, don't put that, don't, don't, hey, we can torture him, don't you dare let him get a plug in there, you know? Uh, so, uh, it, like, we were playing up the joke, you know, it's like, oh, I'm the boy in the cage, you know, whatever, like, I'll play into a joke, whatever, it's fine. It's just something weird about when Jimmy jokes. I have jokes about my dad, because I love jokes with my dad. I'll joke with my dad all the time, I guess piece of shit, hey, my dad. Uh, but I have friends that make fun of my dad, that's fine, because I know their intent, I know where they're coming from. When Jimmy joked with my dad... Sorry, buddy, but if my dad was a child molester, I wouldn't be joking with him at all. I wouldn't even talk to him ever again. That is fucking weird. So for you to say that you joke around with your dad, knowing what he, he is, a child predator, is fucking disturbing. So I'm losing a lot of credibility with this guy that's being interviewed by Dogpack404. I think he could have chosen a lot better person, a lot better contestant that's been through some hard times or some really... Uh, unethical things of Mr. Beast. That's just my opinion. But you guys can think and girls can think what you want in the comment section. Yeah, I said that to seem weird. I don't like it. We were doing that one of those hide and seek videos. Again, you know, at the time, they were a lot realer. Uh, so I got caught. And when you get caught, you know, you go to the, you go to, you go to the place where you get caught. And uh, I, I don't know if there's footage of this. I don't know if, you know, I, don't, I definitely didn't make the final cut. Uh, but he, he says to me, uh, all right, you're going to jail. You know, like your dad. And like, it's a joke. But when my, my I don't think you can joke about the jail or, or your dad that was a sexual predator going to jail. I don't think none of that is a joke at all. I, sh I wouldn't even make side jokes about that. That's just that is just disturbing, man. That is messed up. You know, th there's uh, there's a million things you can make a joke about, and that is not one of them. My friends do it. It's fine. And, and Jimmy wasn't my friend. He was my boss. And that wasn't cool. And so now, I'm locked in a cage at his whim. And I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. And I got Bullshit. You know damn well that your student bills are probably nowhere near as much as what he's giving you. He's giving you a lot extra. Don't give me that sympathy crap. Look, dude, you're making decent money out of it. And you're getting a lot of attention. You're getting fame. You know, you're getting everything that most people would kill for. So don't give me any of this bull crap. I got these cameras on me all the time. And I was unwell. I had editors coming up to me. Said, you good, bud? And I was like, yeah, why? You're clearly unwell. Uh, and he goes, uh, well, because the footage you're sending in is... You're fucking faking it to get sympathy. Just so that you can get extra perks and make things easier on yourself. Fuck you. You know, just handle the stress, handle the situation, you know, handle the challenge which you're in. You know, this guy just, he's like one of those little kids that lies about everything to make his or her life a lot easier so that they can get out of it doing anything. Any tidying up, any cleaning, any anything. It's crazy. Haunting. Because <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, but I am mentally decaying, so I'm doing bits. Someone said there is a horror. Let's be honest, when you go watch someone spend 30 days in a box, you're not there to see if they're a comedian. You're there to see if they fucking can make it. That's all people are looking to see. If they really do 30 days in a box, and can they do it without breaking? That's what most people would be going through their heads. Not, oh, is this guy going to be a stand-up comedian hilarious and make me laugh? Probably not. Or cut uh, of a video in this. And I'm sitting like, who's watching this? Like, who... Who wants to see this? What is fun about this, the video? Because most people don't do that. That's why people like to watch it. That's why they're watching you in that video. Why can't people understand this? How, how often do you walk down the street? For one, not often. How often do you drive a car down the street? Probably very often. When was the last time you saw a fucking person on the side of the street in a box for 30 days? Probably never. So of course it's going to be rare. And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in a year. Um, Jimmy comes in and uh, I'm asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in, he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? He's got two briefcases because there's a lot of money in them. Or one is fake and one is not. And he goes, oh, because this, this one's for today, you know, and this one's for the challenge. 
And I go, what's the challenge today? He goes, you're gonna, you're gonna run a marathon. You're gonna do the two, 22.6K, whatever it is. And you're gonna do it on that treadmill over there. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube. And I'm not, I'm not dyslexic, I'm dumb. I don't, I don't know how to do a Rubik's Cube. Uh, so your first challenge Rubik's Cube. I was like, oh, I don't wanna do that. I was like, oh, camera, I don't, I don't wanna do that. He goes, just do it for the thing, my kid, you know? Like, that, that there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in house. Yeah, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, okay, so you're gonna do a Rubik's Cube for what, $10,000? I'm not very good at Rubik's Cubes because I don't even do them, but I would try it just for poops and giggles because I don't mind trying things. You know, give it a shot. Why not? What, what are we going to lose? Yeah, $10,000. Who cares? I haven't got $10,000 gained anyway from that time I put in, so who cares? It's, it's not like I've lost anything, really. You just haven't gained, you know? So yeah, let's, we'll give it a shot. We'll try it, yeah? So I don't know why he can't think like that. Try it out, even if you suck. You know? He might give you all day to do it, or all year, and you might accidentally get it right. And boom, you've made yourself $10,000. He just isn't positive, this guy that we're, that's being interviewed, or we're interviewing, or the guy that's next to me is interviewing, Dogback. Jake's, uh, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard, because we know he's good. We know he's I couldn't say no to the, the treadmill thing. Yeah. So I, I, I... People who run marathons train forever, and it's still hard. Again, writer. Do I look like I run? I don't run, you know? Let alone a marathon, let alone that train for it. So I was in a sunlightless, you know. The sunlight was what? Oh, I don't get this game, it's awful. The Eve. No, it's terrible. Oh? Wait, did you have a choice or? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing and based on all the other stuff, like you gotta. There was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know, you, then you get up. And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, oh, well, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport and I wanted to get the boost and I wanted the cash. And so I start running at 12. All right, guys and girls, now we're just going to play the, the, the rest of the clip. Okay, the, the 30 more minutes going onward. So we, I can't react to everything. It's going to take two, four, five hours. I, I've i reacted for 26 minutes now. I'm tired. Okay, so just chill out in the comment section where you're like, ah, oh, you don't react. I've done my reacting. I'm exhausted now. Now it's time to just watch like you lot are doing, okay? Now I can be part of the audience like you lot. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks. and uh, I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> And I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. I got off the treadmill. Ah, oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe. It's all over, just these big red... Oh, I've had blisters before. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My, my, my muscles were like, just... Yep. The lactic acid, I... I oh, I've had massive blisters. I got off the treadmill, and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, wow. I mean, that's when um, yeah, uh, get psych in, and I talk to the psych about how I'm uh, not well, and uh, like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that was saying you gotta pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work, and uh, they would they would tell me they'd be like, uh, yeah, everyone knows you over there, everybody loves you. They go, uh, oh, Jake, well, I don't love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. And I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys going to keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like, at least seven more days? It's not too bad. I, no. No. And they didn't let me leave right away either. They wanted to make he sure. Needs, you know, he, he needs to think of more long term. Seven days is nothing. So I just, you know, I'm for a thinking while. months, years they down turn the line. Off. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. They brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it a <sighs> Come on, man. Are you seriously crying or is this fake? They brought in all the people I liked. And Jimmy. <laughs> then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. Damn. But Jimmy had his, like... He was sitting in the chair, turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God, everyone was looking at me, and he was like Lex Luthor over there. 
Lex Luthor. He turns around. He stands up. <laughs> God, he, did the, he does the uh, exact same thing when he's pretending to have that bad. You know when you're watching a video and he's um, he's like, oh, stop! You're gonna make me cry. And he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's not. He's just. <laughs> I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says, "Uh, you." As as if rehearsed by his lawyers. Uh, yeah, you know, your mental health's the most important thing. You know, just want to make sure you're okay. And the last thing we want you to do is. I can almost hear the word "sue" come out of his mouth. The S. He just he just stopped right before it got out. I, I did not get the 300k, but I got, he goes, think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. You know, you were in there for XYZ days. He looks like a young, he looks like a young Dr. Disrespect. 100,000, some change. A little bit. You know, give or take. <laughs> you know how much money I spent in taxes in, a, in, a, in 2021? I spent $44,000 in taxes yep. alone. Yep. Wouldn't and be surprised. Now, I spent all that money on doing stand up. I just I bought plane tickets to go do comedy festivals. You know, my family back home. That's why you should always pay cash. Me. Taxes are crazy. And, uh, I haven't been back uh, on a beast set in any official capacity. Oh cryptocurrency. Any official capacity, Boom. Uh, since then. And then uh, they did the video with somebody else and they worked out the kinks. Mm. And then uh, I still got in some hot water and I knew it would. And I've wanted Thanks. to say a lot of this for a long, long, long time. And I feel good though. I just had to get that off there. Well, it's good that he feels good after going through some traumatic things, I guess. Got some text that Jake sent me after this interview. This is July 29, 2021, a few days after he got out of uh, solitary. This is what Jake sent to How are you feeling after a few days? Better. I still couldn't sleep even a few days out, but I almost have my sleep cycle back on track. My legs and joints are good, but the blisters on my feet still hurt to walk mm -hmm. on. Medical advice I got was not to lance them and just let them go away with time. Yep. I'm mentally still in an uneasy place, but I've gotten back on better help. My therapist is a little concerned, but we are working on things. Minor, this is not supposed to be a traumatic life event. This is supposed to be a uh, Mr. Beast video. Hey Jake, hope you're doing okay. Meg and I just wanted to check in on you. Hey, I'm good and I appreciate that. I'm not exactly 100%. I feel like mentally I'm still recovering a bit, but back in therapy and my therapist is concerned. Haha, ha, but my legs and joints feel better. Like I can walk, but my feet are still covered on those blisters and those hurt to walk on. But I was told the best thing to do is stay off my feet and let them heal. I'm in rally with my family. Also, it'll be like a month before I get the money and they aren't giving me all the money. They're giving me what I won up to that point in the game, which was also a slap in the face, but hey, I'm out, I'm alive. Therapist who knows and cares about you. The whole thing was so fucked and honestly, fuck them for not giving you the money. Meg and I are wishing you the best with your recovery and please feel free to reach out if you need anyone to talk to or need a place to crash in New York. Hope you're doing well, man. That video you uploaded is money, so good. I appreciate it. I'm doing better physically. Mentally, I'm still kind of in a place. I still can't sleep. I've slept five hours in the past three days. I've got to skip this. Included. I'm losing interest in these stupid text messages and Lots writing. I can't. A director might tell a producer, hey, we need um, access to 30 acres of farmland by Tuesday or we lose half a million dollars. Now, if you're the producer, you obviously know that means get it done or you lose your job. So, so what can happen is like a producer's calling up farmers saying, hey, I need to use your land. And the farmer might be like, okay, but you know, I have animals, you can't be making really loud noises, no pyrotech. If someone asked me, hey, I need to use your land, I would say no. I just would. Because it's my fucking land, you know what I'm saying? I just wouldn't let them be on my land. Private property, that's how it is. You look, cannot be trusted. Techniques, and you gotta clean everything up. So the producer's sort of incentivized to lie and say, or maybe the producer doesn't even actually know the total contents of the video, right? Things changed last second. So they're very like, they're financially incentivized to be manipulative and sort of, they're put in positions where it's like, oh, it's either the producer's job or a civilian's job. Like where it talks about, hey, maybe the manager would be willing to bend the rules. Well, you shouldn't really be pressuring civilians to bend the rules that could get them fired, you know? 
I'll show you a real life example. Yeah, this is sure. unused evidence from um, part one. I had seen this Reddit post uh, titled Mr. Beast leaving trash behind and debris at film site in Aiden, yeah, North Carolina. Apparently he left a large boat in a pond as well as debris around the film site and leaving the bottom of the pond weeks and weeks after bullshit. the agreed time frame. This actually rendered it Especially unsafe for campers and almost delayed the camps open the bait multiple times due to not being able to get in contact with Mr. Beast yeah, to get the stuff cleaned up. Know? Out of the area. Uh, so I actually know that this is from a Mr. Beast video called Protect the Yacht, Keep It, uh, where at the end of that video, he actually says, and If you're wondering, yes, we did ensure the lake was completely cleaned up after this video. For the love of God, subscribe so we can pass T series. Yes, yeah, so he says at the end of the video that they made sure it was cleaned up. I was actually on site um, for part of this production, I, I was at this camp. So I decided to send an email out to the camp basically saying, hey, I heard these rumors, I'm, I'm investigating a similar incidents. And the camp responded, uh, actually not denying the claims, going on to say, I am sure that there are no perfect film productions just as there are no perfect people. I am grateful for the opportunity that we had to host the production crew and because grace or forgiveness has been offered to me so freely, I will choose to offer the same. So clearly alluding to the fact that there was a wrongdoing on, on, by Mr. Beast's production team. And that's like sort of the thing is, if you're around Greenville, you know these stories of people working with Mr. Beast and it being extremely unprofessional, them not doing what they say. But they sort of get by a lot on their, their good public image. And, and like, I mean, this camp offered to, to host them completely for free. And I guarantee, like, if you went to the, the lake at the camp and you, and you went magnet fishing, like, you, you'd find all sorts of debris that's still there to this day. Like, they, they didn't clean it all up. So in the case of Jake Weddle, like, I'm sure that there were producers who were in a position of, hey, if Oops. Jake gets out early, we don't have a video and your job is at risk. So there's a tremendous amount of pressure on top of like him being delirious from not sleeping and, and everything to, to just manipulate him to, into staying. Which, which, you know, I'm sure this isn't like technically against the Geneva Convention on torture because he wasn't technically a prisoner. Like he could have left at any time, but because of the extreme pressure to stay in, it's not really a reasonable expectation that he could have just, you know, walked out. Because of the implication. I think Jimmy is a awkward kid who maybe yeah had it a little rough growing up. I can't speak on that, but I do have empathy for it because uh, I you know had it rough growing up. And I think when you're hyper fixated on something, like I, I love stand up, he loves YouTube, everyone you know fixates on a thing, you know. I think he just wanted to be the best YouTuber so bad. And because the industry's metrics, you know, rewarded some not great behavior, if you're just going on autopilot based on what the numbers say. Yeah, there's got to be a behavior thing put into YouTube to keep people in check. Mr. Beast is not above the law, above the rules. But the thing about Mr. Beast is that he doesn't just love YouTube. Mr. Beast, he is obsessed with YouTube. That's all he does and all he thinks about. He probably drives the majority of people around him crazy and nuts because it's very hard to find people that is obsessed with YouTube. I do love YouTube as well, but I'm not obsessed with YouTube, you know, because I do realize there are other things other than YouTube, like the world to travel or to go into my garden or, you know, to go to a restaurant or to do other things other than just YouTube, you know. I do love you guys on YouTube, don't get me wrong, it's just that there's more things to do than just YouTube. I'm sorry, there is. There's millions of things out there to do, if not more. So, you know, you, you can do some things that maybe aren't good, but reap reward. And I think Jimmy just did what the industry and maybe what the system that we have set up demanded. And he yeah. didn't care who got hurt. And yep. I think Jimmy surrounded himself with really, really not so great people. And those people were the ones making the decisions. Yep. And I want to say really important. There are so many good people that work at Mr. Beast who are damn good at their jobs. Like when Jimmy comes in and asks for something impossible, it's these people's jobs to do it. Yep. And they it sh they shouldn't be able to make it happen. And they do. And so, 
I don't think people wanted to talk about stuff because I didn't want my friends to lose their jobs. I don't care about my fucking job. I'll buy a whole other care. But I don't want my friends to lose their jobs. You, you know? don't want anyone to lose their jobs, yeah. I don't want anyone's reputation to be fucked. You know? But uh, just let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. My dad was uh, this, this, like a swim coach, uh, your neighborhood swim team. Everybody, everybody loved him. Everybody loved him. Behind closed doors, he's a real piece of shit. And so, when stuff starts hitting the fan, what? Him? No. Surely. And then, you know, everyone, you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not, you know. But then the news broke, you know, that he did what he did to. Don't do drugs, the kids. Of the team. It's really bad. And it's like when that comes out, you're not surprised, you know? You just go, well, Definitely worse than my sparing. I said, oh, you idiots. Like, I was like, no, what? I was, oh, d- dumbass, god damn it. Uh, but I wasn't surprised. And it was just uh, consequences happened to somebody who was really good at avoiding them for a long time. And I don't know, everybody, everybody loves Jimmy. And behind closed doors, he is not super great. And that image is cultivated purposefully and intentionally. And it's branding, it's marketing, it's, it's YouTube. Okay, so I guess, yeah, just one final question. On sure. a serious note, uh, obviously the Ava Chris Tyson drama, and um, you know, that's a known issue of traditional media. Uh, did you witness or hear about any uh, sexual misconduct at the company? It's crazy. I, I probably hung out with Ava the most out of the main cast uh, just because uh, I was on Beast Hacks. Uh, now Beast Reacts. I don't know if it's still out. Uh, that was a lot of fun because it was just you know, being silly and goofy in front of the camera. And uh, Ava was the only person who was willing to film. Everybody else was too busy or didn't want to. And I was just trying to do my job. Sometimes there'd be like an offhanded joke. That's a little gross. I mean, I'm a stand-up, so I'm very desensitized to that. I didn't hear anything that was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like when I saw, the reason I messaged you instead of talking to a reporter sweetly like I have been was when I saw the dis- Because when I, when I got there, it was like 2019. So I guess if the timelines add up, that would have been like handled for lack of a better term. And then they, and then they started bringing more people on. You know, maybe they thought they had that on the rug, you know? Uh, all right, we handled that. Now let's bring in some writers, you know? Um, and when I saw it, all that stuff started coming out. And the potentiality, as of this moment of recording, you know, I know this has been happening fast and stuff has been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have been in those Discord chats. Or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me. <laughs> if you're going to make fun of my dad. I don't care what happens to me and my career and reputation after this. I had to, I had to say some stuff. So, whatever happens, happens at this point. Uh, outside of it, Chris Tyson, did you really send me or hear about any sexual misconduct at the company? I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I, if it could be investigated, that'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk. But I've heard things, yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy hmm. was covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You know, the tangible proof that he knew, but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Tut, tut. Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender, on the registry and everything, who worked there. And like, you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry, you know, you, you get it. You can still have a job after you're on the, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated, that's one thing. You know, if you do your time, that's fine. I I think there should be rehabilitation in this country. 
But that guy, from what I hear, like I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. My ability is called instant death to any target. <sighs> yep. Victim's age, one to 11 years old. Jesus. Has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. That's disgusting. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. Oh, no way. And you know that he knew and because he'll be in videos, he'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around, and whenever he, he, he is, He's wearing yeah. a mask. Why He's would you wear a mask? Molester. Why would you conceal your face? Like you, what, what are you concealing? That you are a registered sex offender? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? He's a registered How much sex more offender. Can you Why would Mr. Beast hire someone like that? a sex offender? With a physical mask. Like, do I have to... Is, how, is it more on the nose? Or... <laughs> Disgusting. I, I don't know why they let him go because there's there's kids are watching rumors back kids and forth. Kids in his you know, so I don't video know why sometimes. they let him go. But what? He didn't leave at one point, even if that guy didn't do anything, what did they do? Background checks on Mr. Beast. They still knew about it's not it. hard to do. Around. And they've got the money. They've got the time. Why not? What if he's not? I don't Obviously know. lacking the brains. Before I was there. They called him Delaware. He's like, why, 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 do you, why do you call him Delaware? And I, didn't, I didn't know. Apparently, they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. That's his nickname? Colloquially? Like, you know, yeah, it's Delaware. And don't ask him why. Yeah. The fuck? And Jimmy know about him? The likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. All right, so finally I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line is a, a different former Mr. Beast employee uh, talking about Delaware. Um, also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record uh, off the registry. And that's what actually like sparked this person to start recording. Okay, so Reed is Mr. Reese's former manager who was in the last video telling Jimmy you Reed, know, hey, yeah, don't promote him. gambling to children. Uh, so, you know, I think I think Reed's taken uh, two W's this month. You know, uh, no, don't so promote Reed's gambling good. to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. Also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that Jimmy wouldn't know. But, you know, I know that that's, I'm sure that's the defense he'll go with. So I'll just say preemptively, like, you know, if somehow Jimmy didn't know about Delaware, I think it's still such an extreme level of negligence. Like, what you're not doing background checks. You're not, everyone yeah. at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. You would do um, background checks. I, I think on. that needs more of an explanation than just saying, I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this know. person get into the company? And, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is Interview around people, children. Yeah, check. Jimmy, I think Always. we need an explanation from you. Or, or you know, your, your lawyers and, and PR people and representatives and spokespersons and um, on how you could have not known that there was an like, offender uh, at a high level in your... Like, I would probably even background check random subscribers that appeared in my videos. Like, it was just... You've got to check people, man. Otherwise, you don't know what you're dealing with. Company. And while you're responding to that, why not just respond to the allegations of, of rigging contest videos and selling fake signatures, running illegal lotteries, um, you know, the, the dangerous conditions on the set of Beast Games, you should address those too. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just let us know. Okay, that was my interview with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle. Uh, I, I know he will be coming out with a uh, longer cut of this interview as well as other content. Um, so I just wanted to shout him out, Jake Weddle, top link in the description.
Okay, that seems a little bit forced. I'll cry at the end. I've waited a long time to talk about a lot of this publicly, so thank you for doing what you're doing. So long. Thank you for watching. Yes, well, thank you lot for watching as well. Um, let me know in the comment section what you think about this. Um, crazy. Uh, not sure how to close this, but... Mr. Beast has a lot of explaining to do, put it that way. A lot of explaining. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of explaining to do. It still does not look very good for him, and it's, I'm, his subscriber count must be flying down. It has to be for, from now. This is just awful.